Now, in terms of getting everybody together in one spot, what what? Tell us about the process of that. Like, how long are all Can the, I keep this a little longer? Sure. Well, you know. Yeah. I just want to say one thing, which might be different from what well, sorry, normally sorry. <laughs> n- <laughs> normally has been uh, is being done when you have a symphony orchestra and a band. Right. Because um, normally you would have a click track. Mm-hmm. Normally you would have headphones. Everybody listen to uh, the drums. Everybody keep rhythmic. Um, we don't have any click tracks, no headphones. Everything is done at one moment in the studio. So that we are all on the same musical ID. And by all, you're talking about a 70-piece orchestra, correct? Not only that. Uh, keyboard, guitar, right. bass, and drums. Right. We isolate the electric, electronic instruments and the drums so that we can later add things, but we cannot change anything in the orchestra. Um, but but this is I mean that every person is sitting and, and concerned about the same musical idea, the same musical goal, and I think we can hear that in the recording. That 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 and and what made me very happy when we finished this, we edited this together, and uh, Keith and Mark started uh, to recompose everything and invent new parts and uh, really were very creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, the weeks after we finished in Munich. And we met again over here and did some overdubs and, and for the mixing sessions and things like that. And, and it was d- development constantly. Mm-hmm. And I think, um, I think it added a lot more personality to all the works because for the first time, I, I think for the first time, you heard your own music with a full symphony orchestra performed like we do with the music we take from our repertoire. Mm-hmm. And we tried to create something, we try to make the music talk, mm-hmm. and uh, the music to, to g- uh, tell a story, and everybody tried to, to, to emphasize on the, the right moments in the music. And, and somehow I felt very proud being on stage and seeing that things like this happen. I, I, I also have to say that because I can go on a, and, and conduct a Mahler symphony, Brahms, Tchaikovsky symphony with the orchestra, they trust me, and if I demand them to do something, they will do it. Mm-hmm. And, and this is the advantage because when suddenly Mark plays his American Matador, we have to stretch. When Keith uh, plays uh, the, the piano part of uh, Endless Enigma or the piano part of uh, Tarkus, we have to change our opinion. And we take his ID and transform it into the next 16 bars. Wow. And this is how music is created. And now I'm going to pass the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> what a marvelous cadenza. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> he is the maestro. Uh, Tacit. Yeah. Tacit. <laughs> then a reprieve. And then a reprieve. <laughs> what a reprieve upon. Uh, or approve upon. Well, actually, I, you know, I feel very fortunate that uh, I've actually met a lot of the composers that Terje mentioned. Um, didn't actually meet Aaron Copeland, but uh, I did correspond with him uh, wonderfully, actually. And of course, uh, Alberto Yanestera. Uh, didn't I didn't get to meet Bach? Did you? <laughs> no, no. I corresponded with him though. <laughs> By email, perhaps. <laughs> no, it was a candle in the middle of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as uh, I suppose we all will do for many years to come. But uh, you know, I can only hope that this album, you know, Three Fates Project, inspires such a marvelous. Uh, younger generation of musicians right. to uh, to move on you know it's um, it's not been an easy job uh, and of course the variety of instruments that, that I've used <coughs> not only on this album but you know in the past like the the Moog synthesizer and I'll tell you something <coughs> I was actually banned from the British uh, Musicians Union for using the Moog synthesizer. Because it put so many of the orchestra people out of work, I would imagine, that, right? That's yeah. exactly what they were saying, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Who, need, who uh, needs a string section when you got one on, on your Moog? Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, it did, you know, thankfully it, it works out okay. Technology and, um, strikes once again, you know? What? 
technology strikes once again. Yes, you know, but to, you the, know, to the I, I suppose, starving musician. Um, who was the inventor of the saxophone? Sax, was it? Adolf, Adolf. Yeah, yeah. Adolf Sachs. And, uh, Ravel? That was phone sex, wasn't it? <laughs> I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Ravel used the sax. It's quite popular, that one is. Yeah, well, Debussy did a sax, saxophone rhapsody as well. I don't, uh, really. Yeah. yeah but it basically, well, why yeah, did it yeah. just become, you know, used in jazz, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, it was used in Ravel's Bolero. Yes, it was. That's right. Um, and Abaddon's Bolero is on, on this. It's n nothing right. to do with Ravel. It has some of Ravel's notes in it, but not necessarily <laughs> played well. The you play, there's a couple <laughs> in the right order. <laughs> But is it something that, that, that you think that uh, can be brought out live? Well, let Mark uh, deal with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, it we've, is possible. Yeah, we've, we've actually got some uh, dates that look like they might happen in Spain next year. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the question is finding the right orchestra that we'll, you know, we'll be able to spend enough time with to rehearse because sure. the stuff is not easy to do. Yeah. And, it, and, again, it's, it's the assimilation process of an orchestra learning how to play with the band you know, and uh, and vice versa, because there's a lot of things that are great, uh, you know, on both counts of things that we have to learn in in in, in playing together. So uh, it goes both ways. So yeah, I mean, we're gonna, you know, Keith and I are gonna perhaps do some duo stuff as well, and try to work out some arrangements to some things so that we can, you know, do this all together at the same time. So any of the overdubs we can do live, you know, as opposed to doing them on the record. On the record, it's a different beast than it is live, and we have to make sure that we can. Um, use all the things that people are going to expect to hear, you know, in a live context and work out the logistics of all of that, who's going to play what parts, and, and along with the symphonic, uh, you know, uh, cooperation. So we'll see uh, what happens with that. It's, there's, again, with, with, the, with the symphony, they have to book a long time in advance with their seasons. So it's not something you just go, oh, okay, in three months we're going to go do this. Right. We have to plan well in advance, and we're Same thing, obviously you're finding a hall to, to yeah, be able to perform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, Tadier is working on some of that stuff uh, since he's much more uh, in contact with with those orchestras. So, mm -hmm. uh, we will see what happens in the next year. Probably the 2013, 2014 will be some things that we will probably. It's a wonderful do. project. I really, I really am impressed by it. And